Now we're going to have a look at ways to reference all elements in the array. The good thing about arrays is that because they all have the same array name, but just different element numbers, we can set up a loop and reference every element within that array. Let's use a for loop to try that. We'll use a very similar one to the one we used when we introduced for loops in the last chapter. And we're going to start at zero. This time our array, you may have noticed, is a slightly different one. Uh, we're using the out we're sticking with the Beatles theme, but this time we're on Beatles albums. And our first Beatle album is Please Please Me, and that's in element zero. It's the first uh, element of an array is element zero, so we're starting at zero, and we're going to use as our continuing condition, the middle condition of our for loop, is going to be the variable i is less than four. That's because the last element is three, and three is the last number that's less than four, because for itself that condition wouldn't be true. And we're going to go up by one increment each time. And let's echo, let's say we echo album number is, and we're using uh, the little concatenation uh, uh, the concatenation operator there, and we're using variable i to keep track of what number album we're on. Of course, this has nothing to do with the Beatles output. This is simply an arbitrary collection of albums that we may have. And then we're going to put, another after another concatenation operator, we're going to write the album's array and the element will be i. And after that, let's put in an HTML break tag so that each element has a separate line all to itself. Close our curly brackets and away we go. Let's take a look and see what that does. refresh our browser and here it's given us all the elements of our array and that's worked very nicely. However, what happens if later on we come back to our PHP script and we've bought a new album? We're going to pop that on the end of our array. Let's save that and then we're going to try and run the script again and what's going to happen? Whoops, for some reason it hasn't noticed that we put a new element in our array. Why was that? Let's take a look back here. The reason is that we've got the same condition in the middle of our for loop, which is variable i is less than 4. So it only works with four elements, because once we get into the fifth element, which is, because of our zero indexed arrays, element 4, that's no longer less than 4 we need to bring this up to 5. Now, that works fine for this little instance, in which case we've just made one change here, but in terms of programming practice, it's a bad idea to have to change our for loop every time we add an element to our array, particularly as we get on to details within more complex uh, integration with back-end systems in which we're referencing databases and maybe we won't know how many elements our array is going to have. So we need a way of making our for loop flexible to count as many elements as are in this array. To do this, PHP has a special inbuilt function called count. So instead of five, we're just going to put in count albums. 
va uh, variable albums. Just like that. Let's save that. And we'll check that one out. And yep, it's got all of them. Just to show how that works, let's say at the end here we echo Let's save that and take a look at our browser and refresh that. And as we can see, the number five, the number five is what this outputs. It counts each element within our array and it returns that figure. You'll notice that it returns the figure five even though this is zero index. The reason for that is not returning the number of the top element, it's returning the number of elements altogether. That's why, so long as we're starting with zero, the top element will always be one less than the count of the full array. That's why we can set, that's why we can use this as our middle condition on our for loop. One more thing we can learn about arrays before we move on to associative arrays is the sort function. This allows us to sort our albums array alphabetically. That's the syntax for the statement. Just use the function name sort and we put the array within these normal brackets here. Let's save that and see what that does. As we can see, alphabetically sorted help, then let it be starts with an L, please, please, me. As we can see, that's alphabetically sorted. So that's our sort command. There's a very similar command known as R sort, and what that stands for is reverse sort, so that'll sort it in backwards alphabetical order. So if we save that, what with the albums array R sorted, I reverse sorted, then we go back here and we refresh, we'll see that the array has been sorted the other way up. So Sergeant Peppers goes into the first slot, revolver, please, please me, let it be in help. So those are two very useful little functions. However, there is one more thing that needs to be known about the sort command and the R sort command. Let's take, change that back to sort. And let's put in some values which can show the slight complication to sort, which is that it's case sensitive. So capital A will come before capital Z, but capital Z will come before lowercase a, for instance. It's easier to show you what I mean if we type in some examples here. We just take some upper and lower case words and choosing A and Z because they're very easy to get. Now we have here the order so far is capital A followed by the word beginning with small a, then a capital Z and then a small z. Intuitively we would expect them to stay roughly in that order, or maybe put the ALO before Amina and Zebedee would stay before Zest. However, because of the case sensitivity of sort and R sort, we're going to see that something slightly different happens. Let's save those and let's refresh. As we can see, the capitals come before the lowercase letters regardless of what they are. So it'll go capital A, capital B, capital C, and then finally after all the, all the elements that start with the capital letter are over, 
then it's going to start looking at the lowercase letters. That's something we need to be especially aware of with user input where we can't tell whether the user is going to use a capital letter or not. So we've learned about referencing arrays and sorting arrays and now we're going to look at a different kind of array called the associative array. <coughs>